In this episode today, we're looking at the differences between a kitchen like this, an 18th century kitchen, and a modern kitchen today. Thanks for joining us. So there are four or five sort of major components to a kitchen, at least a kitchen we think of today. Probably the main one is the heating part, the, the stove, the oven. Let's go take a look at our stove or oven or our hearth. So here's the hearth that we've got here in the kitchen set. And this hearth is actually based on a German hearth at the Frontier Culture Museum in uh, Staunton, Virginia. They've got a German house. Uh, there and there's a hearth very similar to this. It's a little bit lower, uh, but that's what we base this particular hearth on. This hearth uh, has a uh, a brick fire brick cooking surface, and we've got an oven that's built into the wall here. And this is just like this is the stovetop of the 21st century. Um, now, of course, we have to cook with wood or possibly at times charcoal, but those are our only cooking uh, fuels that we can use. Of course, today we're using gas or electricity uh, almost all the time. And that's one of the giant differences here between the 18th century and the 21st century. Cooking over a fire, cooking with uh, either charcoal, which is a little bit easier, or wood, um, it's a constant battle to keep a regular heat going on underneath your cooking surface. So many times we want to have this very controllable heat surface and we don't have that in the 18th century. We've got to be fussing with this continuously as opposed to just turning a knob and setting it to three or taking a look at your flame and getting just the right temperature. Uh, very, very difficult in the 18th century. And you all, I mean, it is, you just can't leave something alone. You have to be messing with it all the time. And over here, we've got the oven. And we have actually a real similar problem with an oven. I mean, if you go and use your oven today, you, you set it to, you know, 350 degrees or whatever the, uh, the equivalent is where you're at. You just set that knob and it takes care of the whole thing, right? Sometimes you might even have a timer. You can say, yes, cook it exactly for exactly one hour. And uh, one of the giant differences between an 18th century oven and that is that in an 18th century oven, you stoke your oven full of wood and you spend maybe an hour, two, maybe even three hours getting your oven up to temperature. And when you think it's the right temperature, you pull all that fuel out and uh, you set it aside and then you put the thing you want to cook in there, you close the door and what's happening? It's not keeping the same temperature, but the temperature is slowly declining over time. And it totally depends on your oven as to exactly how quickly that happens. And that is a real battle. And one of the differences between baking in the 18th century and modern, it completely changes what's going on, your starting temperature and your ending temperature. Uh, it, so there's a, a big difference in baking between the 18th and 21st century. The other thing that's going on here is we built this, I built this as a German hearth on purpose, up high, uh, at, this, at this level, basically to make it very easy, both it's, it's authentic, but it's also a lot easier to do an episode, a cooking episode with video. So I can cook right here at this height and uh, you can see it very easily. But if you look at many of our other uh, videos where we are on site at other 18th century kitchens or style kitchens, you'll find that almost all of them have their hearth on the ground. You have to lean all the way down and cook on the floor basically. It's very difficult to shoot a video like that, and it's no easier to do your cooking like that either. It's very, very difficult. And you can see from some of our other videos how much trouble it is to do that. I also want to point out the smoke hood that we've got here. Um, in the 18th century, of course, we're bur burning wood, we're burning it inside, and we have this constant battle of smoke in the kitchen. And uh, you might think that from the videos that we don't have any problem with having smoke in the kitchen. But contrary to uh, that, we have smoke problems all the time. Unless the draft is just right, the door is open, the windows open just right, the room fills with smoke. And it's also true not only in this kitchen set, but in other situations. Other 18th century kitchens have that same sort of problem. You have to have a lot of draft to keep smoke out of the room and they had the same kind of problem in the 18th century. 
Some kitchens probably benefited from just the right chimney, just the right draft. They didn't have smoke problems, but I'm imagining the majority of them did have smoke problems. And that's another one of the great things about a modern kitchen is that the fuels we use, electricity especially, but gas also, they don't, they, the, the fuels don't leave a taste in the food itself. Uh, in the 18th century, you were always having this wood smoke flavor going into your food. And you might think that's great for one or two dishes, but every single thing you eat, uh, it gets boring after a while. And you'll do see references to um, cooks in the 18th century trying to keep that smoky flavor out of their food. That's another battle from the 18th century. So next on the tour here is uh, what are we going to do for cabinetry and shelving and storage? And there are two different kinds of storage, maybe three different kinds of storage that, that we would think about. Both storage of equipment and then storage of food itself. So storage of equipment uh, in the 18th century kitchen, um, you know, they probably didn't have as much equipment lying around as we do, unless it was a very affluent kitchen. Most of the kitchens uh, that you see in pictures, no, they tend to be affluent kitchens, so they tend to be fairly well equipped, but uh, I would imagine most 18th century kitchens have not that many cooking implements lying around. Um, and you don't, in the, in the picture, see that much storage of this equipment. Many things are hanging on the wall, um, and you do see a few shelves, like the shelf behind me, and a few kind of mm, cabinets uh, that you see like this. Nothing like the cabinets that we have today. Of course, you know, our, our kitchens are lined with cabinets that are both full of food, we use them like pantries, and full of equipment. And, but you can see here a, um, the, the kinds of things that we have in our uh, cabinet here. If you look at most of these, you'll see I've got a lot of them turned upside down, and that's another one of the major differences. I hope there's a difference here. Um, so many of these 18th century kitchens, they're overrun with uh, rodents. There's always, where there's food in the 18th century, they have pest problems. Uh, rodents and other kinds of you know, insect problems in their kitchen. So many times you'll see all the bowls and things turned upside down because uh, that way if, if rodents are running around your things, they don't get inside of them and then you know, mess them up, okay? So if they're upside down, that doesn't seem to happen so much. And here's the other thing you don't see in these 18th century kitchens is there's nothing like a refrigerator. Uh, you do find uh, at times in the 18th century for food storage, especially cold food storage, you'll uh, find things in a cellar, which we don't see very many pictures of, but they definitely stored some of their food things down in the cellar where it, where it was cooler and hopefully drier. Uh, they also had spring houses where they would put especially dairy kinds of things uh, to keep them cool, but they just didn't have anything like a refrigerator. Most of the time when you see food stored in an 18th century kitchen, hey, it's just hanging up on the wall. Maybe it's getting smoked up in the chimney or uh, it's actually sometimes getting smoked up just in the upper parts of the kitchen. You'll see some pictures uh, with that where they might store cheeses or bread or even meat. Uh, in their kitchen and uh, they, well, I don't know how it exactly turned out, but that, that was one of the only ways they had to really store food. So it's basically right out there in the open and everything else, you had to eat it up right away or it was gonna go bad within a day or so. Another one of these major components are work surfaces in the 18th century kitchen. And uh, you know, most of the time we've got islands uh, in the middle of our kitchen. We've got all this countertop space. You really don't find too much of that uh, in the 18th century. We do have a little bit of countertop space and we've got the large uh, working surface, the big kitchen table that's in the middle of the, of the kitchen. Now, this work surface is actually made specifically for making videos, so it's a little bit higher uh, so that you can, you can see what we're doing here a, a little bit uh, better, but in most of these 18th century kitchens, you do see a fairly large and low table in the middle to do all that cooking work uh, in, in your kitchen. So what's, what's really missing here? I mean, if you think about your kitchen at home, it's like, okay, we don't have a refrigerator. That's right. Um, but we do have a cooking surface or a, a cooking surface. We do have a working surface. We do have some storage of things, but the big thing that's missing in this 18th century kitchen is where's the sink, where's the water? 
And that is one of these major advantages that we have over these uh, folks that are in the 18th century. They have no water except what they bring in in pails and buckets and no real place to get rid of it. So doing the dishes or just having water to work with is much more difficult in the 18th century. If you think about it, we have this tremendous advantage of not only having water, but water under pressure at both hot and cold. And not only that, but the water goes away. And we have this sink and it's got a drain and, and it all goes away immediately. They have none of that in the 18th century. They might at times have possibly a pump uh, on the inside so they can ju just get regular cold uh, water and hand pump it into a situation. Very rarely do you see that. It is fairly rare. Um, but th that's one of these things. Doing the dishes in the 18th century was so much more difficult. You can imagine uh, bringing in the water by hand, heating it up over the fire so you have it at least you know, somewhat tempid, uh, tepid, then it's always getting cold again. You're having to fight that and getting the dishes done must have been just, just so uh, difficult. And I, I, I can't even imagine it myself. When we cook in here, we make a mountain of dishes and then I have to take them all inside uh, to my house and, and uh, wash them up the regular way because I don't want to have to, you know, wash dishes in the 18th century method. And we do have a video uh, talking a little bit about uh, cleaning up and, and doing uh, the dishes in the 18th century. Much, much more difficult. And another one of these advantages that we might not recognize is just simply having artificial light in our kitchens. Uh, in the 18th century, uh, you had the, the light from the fire and you had the light from the windows, probably an open door just so you could get a draft and not fill your room with smoke. And if you're cooking early in the morning, which you know happened all the time before the sun came up, all you had was a little bit of candlelight or a simple oil lamp to light your way around the kitchen. Uh, it is so difficult to cook in the dark and you know that they had so much difficulty with that. And today we just flip on the light. So there you have this uh, quick tour of uh, the 18th century kitchen and sort of comparing it to a modern kitchen. Uh, re it really is amazing all the advantages we have today versus what they had in the 18th century. If you ever get a chance to take a class and use an 18th century kitchen, I highly recommend it. Uh, you'll certainly go home with new respect for what you have available to you uh, each and every day you're in your kitchen. And I want to thank you for coming along on this uh, little journey through the kitchen here and all the amazing support you give us, watching our videos, uh, commenting on them, thumbs ups, when you share our videos, really, I wanna thank you for that. There are also folks that support us monetarily through Patreon or going to our website and purchasing items. Thank you so much for all your amazing support. And thanks for coming along and experiencing this uh, little tour as we tour this 18th century kitchen. Thanks for joining us today.